and welcome back to part two of of the upload of Shabbat service for Waymaker Messianic Jewish and Christian Center USA. It is Saturday, September 25th, 2021 on the Gregorian calendar, on the Hebrew calendar of the year 5782. It is the 19th of Tishri. And we were um, reading from the Torah portion and we are going to complete uh, the Torah portion and then we will get into the half Torah portion. We've got um, we will be reading from Ezekiel and, and Zechariah in the Haftar portion. For this final um, segment of the Torah portion, we are going to Numbers. We are going to Numbers chapter 29, and we are going to go from uh, 12, verse 12 to verse 40. Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles, on the 15th day of the seventh month, you are to have a sacred assembly. You are not to do any of your work, and you are to celebrate and fe the feast to Adonai for seven days. You are to offer a burnt offering by fire to Adonai as a pleasing aroma, 13 young bulls from the herd, two rams, and 14-year-old male lambs without defect. Their green offerings of fine flour mixed with oil, three tenths of an ephah with each of the 13 bulls, two tenths with each of the two rams and one-tenth with each of the fourteen lambs, plus one male goat as a sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offering. On the second day, you are to offer twelve young bulls from the herd, two rams, and fourteen-year-old male lambs, without flaw with their grain and drink offerings, with the bulls, rams, and lambs at, as appropriate by their number according to the regulations, plus one male goat as a sin offering, as well as the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. On the third day, offer 11 bulls, two rams, and 14-year-old male lambs without defect, with their grain and drink offerings, with the bulls, rams, and lambs, the number specified, and a male goat as a sin offering in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. On the fourth day, ten bulls, two rams, and fourteen-year-old male lambs, without flaw, their grain offerings and drink offerings with the bulls, rams, and lambs by their number according to their regulations, and one male goat as a sin offering, and the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. On the fifth day, nine bulls, two rams, and fourteen male, one-year-old lambs without defect, with their grain and drink offerings by their number as specified as one goat for a sin offering, in addition to the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. On the sixth day, eight bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs, a year old without defect, with the bulls, rams, and lambs with their grain and drink offerings, according to those numbers specified in one goat for a sin offering, with the regular burnt offering and its grain and drink offerings. On the eleventh, oh, I'm sorry, on the seventh day, Seven bulls, two rams, and fourteen male lambs without defect a year old, plus their grain and drink offerings for the bulls, rams, and lambs, according to the numbers specified, in addition to one male goat for sin offering and the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. On the eighth day, there shall be for you an assembly. You are to do no regular work. You are to offer to Adonai a burnt offering, a fire offering, a pleasing aroma, one bull, one ram and seven male lambs, a year old, without defect, and their grain and drink offerings with the bull, ram, and lamb corresponding to their number according to their regulations, and a goat for sin offering, besides the regular burnt offering with its grain and drink offerings. You are to prepare these for Adonai at your Moedim, in addition to your vow and free will offerings along with your burnt offerings, grain offerings, drink offering, and fellowship offerings. So Moses told the night Israel all that Adonai commanded Moses. So we go to, uh, there's a lot that happened with uh, in these Torah portions. Um, the people had sinned um, and Moses was interceding for, for the people. He had come down. He was very angry with them too uh, for in the time that he had gone up to um, get the Ten Commandments or what is known as the Ten Words on the tablets. Um, 
B'nai Isra got themselves into trouble. They um, had a golden calf constructed and they were worshiping a false god. And um, God knew what they were doing. And he told Moses to go down to these people. Um, that had happened prior to this segment. Um, so Moses had broke it. He, he broke the tablets in anger. Um, so he was going up to, to receive the second set. Um, God had addressed um, Moses by telling Moses, these are stiff neck people, you know, yet I am going to go before them, um, but they must not be worshiping. They must not intermingle with the people in the land. They must, they must follow my mitzvah. They must smash down all their Asherah poles and get rid of their false gods. They must not intermingle uh, and get caught up into idolatry. Um, that that has been a huge pattern here, and and that pattern still exists in our in our world today. People worship all kinds of things. They some people worship themselves and money and objects, and they 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 make gods out of all kinds of things and and have idols of all kinds of things. We are not to worship anything but God. God is the only one worthy of worship. And that's our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So that was addressed. Moses did come down with, uh, he had been with, with God. He asked to seek God's glory. God protected him um, so he could see the back of him. But when Moses descended from the mountain, his face shone and it was radiant and um, the people were afraid. Uh, so he wore a veil when he was with the people, but when he was with God, he, he removed the veil so he could communicate with God. And he met with God like, like a friend would meet. He, he was friends with God. Um, and he talked with God as, you know, as, as, as a friend would talk to another friend and they communed together. He had a true relationship with God. And that's what God wants with each and every one of us. He He wanted that with Benai Israel, but again, they got all fearful when they saw the the smoke coming from the mountain, the fire, the the shaking, the loud trumpeting noise uh, sounds uh, from God. Um, and they told Moses, "You you go up and talk to God. You and whatever He tells you, we will do." So that is how they got the law. Again, we have the ability through Yeshua now to have a relationship with, with God. He doesn't care about religion. Don't get all legalistic. He wants a relationship with you. You know, Jesus, Yeshua, was the ultimate sacrifice. That is all we needed. Um, so we don't need to get all legalistic. We need to have relationship. But going going on also with the Torah, um, the festivals were all explained, the appointed times. These are appointed times for all generations. And now, again, we do not do sacrifices of animals, but we do keep the seven commanded feasts of God every year because they are appointed times. And they are absolutely for signs and seasons. <clears throat> the first four were already fulfilled through Yeshua. And we need to be aware because the last three will be fulfilled at a future time. And they are significant, very significant to what will be happening in the future. And we are getting ever close to those times happening. Uh, we've been in the end days since Yeshua left. And we're 2,000 years plus, so how much closer are we to his second coming? And this is what these last feasts signify. So um, then it, the last readings that we had were actually the specific instruction on sacrifices um, that Adonai gave to the people. And again, we, we do not, we're not doing animal sacrifice you know, anymore. So no more animal sacrifices are taking place, but we are honoring these time frames. Okay, so we're going to go to the half Torah portion. 
um, and the first Heftor portion is in Ezekiel, and we're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 38. We're doing chapter 38 and chapter 39, um, and that will be both chapters in their entirety. This is Gog's alliance invade, invades Israel. Yeah, this is Gog and Magog. You know, this is future. This is also future um, prophecy that did not happen in chapter 38 and 39. So um, the word of Adonai came to me saying, Son of man, set your face toward God of the land of Magog chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, prophesy against him and say, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, I am against you, God, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you about and put hooks into your jaws. I will bring you out with all your army, horses and horsemen, all of them splendidly dressed, a vast assembly with breastplate and shield, all of them wielding swords. With them will be Persia, push and put all of them with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his troops, the house of Togomar, from the extreme north and all his troops, many peoples with you. Be prepared, prepare yourself, you and all your company gathered around you, be a guard for them. After many days you will be summoned in the latter years, in the latter years. So yes, this is prophetic. You will come against the land that has been brought back from the sword and regathered from many peoples on the mountains of Israel, which had been a continual waste. So yes, you can tell this is futuristic, um, because there had been a time before Israel was rebirthed as a nation that it was a waste. It was a wasteland. It had to be rebuilt up. Um, so it had been, you know, it had been that way. Uh, but there but there were but they were brought out from the peoples when all of them dwelling when all of them are dwelling securely you will come up you will come like a storm and you will you will be like a cloud covering the land you and all your troops and many peoples with you thus is adonai elohim it will come to pass in that day that things will come into your heart and you will devise an evil plan so this is the this is like coming up to um, the last battle of Armageddon, in, which will happen in Megiddo. Um, I just want to say before we go further, we're talking about when Israel um, is dwelling safely and securely. That has not happened yet. When you look at all the rocket fire that goes into Israel and, and all the attacks that continually uh, go on and on and on. I mean, there's little pockets of safety and security, but not complete, like, shh, complete safe, safety and security, because they're always having to be on guard for someone attacking them, you know, and it's really, it's really sad, um, because this is their land. So I'm going to continue with that. You will say, I will go up against the land of unwalled villages, I will rise upon the quiet people who live securely, all of them living without walls, having no bars or gates, in order to see spoil and carry off plunder, to turn your hand against the waste places now inhabited and against the people gathered from the nations who have been acquiring livestock and property who live in the center of the world. Sheba, Didan, and the merchants of Tarshis with all its young lions will say to you, have you come to see spoil? Have you assembled your company to plunder, to carry away silver and gold, to take away livestock and property, to make off with immense spoils? Therefore, son of man, prophesy, say to God, thus says Adonai Elohim, in that day when my people Israel dwell safely, you will not know. You will come from your place out of the extreme north, you and many peoples with you, all of them riding on horses, a great company and mighty army you will come up against my people israel like a cloud covering the land it will happen in the last days 
I will bring you against my land so that the nations may know me. When I am sanctified through you, Gog, before their eyes, thus says Adonai Elohim, are you the one that I spoke up about in former times through my servants, the prophets of Israel, who prophesied in those days for many years that I would bring you against them? In that day when God comes against the land of Israel, it is a declaration of Adonai, my fury will rise up in my nostrils. In my jealousy and the fire of my wrath I have spoken, surely in that day there will be a great earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea, the birds of the heavens, the beasts of the field, all creeping things that creep upon the grounds and all humans upon the face of the earth will shake at my presence. The mountains will be thrown down. The steep places will fall. Every wall will fall to the ground. I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains. It is a declaration of Adonai. Every man's sword will be against his brother. I will punish him with pestilence and blood. I will pour out rain on him, on his troops, and on the many peoples with him. A torrential rain with hailstones, fire, and brimstone. So I will magnify and sanctify myself. I will make myself known in the eyes of many nations, and they will know that I am Adonai. And chapter 39, Destruction of Gog. You, son of man, prophesy against Gog and say, Thus says Adonai Elohim, Behold, I am against you, Gog, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. I will turn you around, drive you along, and lead you up from the extreme north. I will bring you upon the mountains of Israel, then I will strike your bow from your left hand and make your arrows drop from your right hand. You will fall on the mountains of Israel, you and all your troops and the people that are with you. I will give you as food to all kinds of bird, birds of prey and to the beasts of the field. You will fall on an open field, for I have spoken. It is a declaration of Adonai. I will send fire on Magog and those who live securely in the islands. Then they will know that I am Adonai. So I will make my holy name known among my people Israel. I will not let my holy name be profaned anymore. The lands will know that I am Adonai, the Holy One in Israel. Behold, it is coming. It will be done. It is a declaration of Adonai. This is the day that I have spoken about. The inhabitants of Israel's cities will go out and kindle fires with the weapons, shields, and breastplates, bows and arrows, war clubs, and spears. They will make fires with them for seven years. When Adonai destroys his enemy against Israel, they will be making fires with their weapons for seven years. That's how much will be destroyed. They will not take wood out of the field or cut anything from the forest. For they will make fire from the weapons. They will plunder those who plundered them and loot those who looted them. It is a declaration of Adonai. On that day I will give Gog a burial place there in Israel, the valley of the travelers east of the sea. It will block those who travel through, since they will bury Gog and all his multitude there. Then they will call it the valley of Harmon Gog. The house of Israel will bury them for seven months. In order to cleanse the land, all the people of the land will bury them. It will be memorials, memora, it will be memorable for them. A day when I am glorified, it is a declaration of Adonai. And this is, again, a future prophecy. Men will continually set apart to travel through the land and bury the travelers remaining on the face of the land in order to cleanse it. At the end of seven months, they will make their search. When they travel through the land, if any sees the man's bone, he will set up a sign by it until the barriers have buried it in the valley of Harmon Gog. Harmona will also be the name of the city, so they will cleanse the land. You, son of man, thus says Adonai Elohim, say to every kind of bird and to every beast of the field, assemble and come. Gather from all around to, to my sacrificial feast that I have prepared for you, a great sacrifice in the mountains of Israel. You will eat flesh and drink blood. You will eat the flesh of mighty men and drink the blood of princes of the earth as rams lambs goats bulls all of them fasting fast fatlings of bashan so you will eat fat until you are gorged and you will drink blood until you are drunk for my sacrificial feast that i have prepared for you 
you will be filled at my table with horses and horsemen, with mighty men and all the warriors. It is a declaration of Adonai. Israel will know Adonai. I will put my glory among the nations. All the nations will see my judgment that I will execute and my hand that I will lay on them. The house of Israel will know that I am Adonai their God from the day from that day onward. The nations will know that the house of Israel went into exile for their iniquity because they broke faith with me. So I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their enemies. All of them fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and their transgressions. I hid my face from them. Therefore, thus says Adonai Elohim, now I will restore Jacob from exile when I have compassion on the whole house of Israel. I will be zealous for my holy name. They will bear their shame and all their disloyalty by which they broke faith with me when they were living securely in their land with no one making them afraid. When I have brought them back from the peoples and have gathered them out of their enemies' land, I will be sanctified in them in the eyes of many nations. Then they will know that I am Adonai their God, since it was I who caused them to go into exile among the nations, and I who will gather them back to their own land. I will never again leave them there. I will never again hide my face from them, for I have poured out my ruach upon the house of Israel. It is a declaration of Adonai. So this is quite the parallel um, to the people going into the promised land before before they had gone into exile years, many, many years later. Um, God was fighting for um, the people then, clearing out the land, making sure um, the nations that he did not want them to be uh, mingling with were cleared out um, as well. But now, um, after exile, um, after exile, um, this is futuristic. And yes, um, our people are going back to Israel. Uh, many people have returned to Israel. Um, but again, like I said, um, there isn't a time where they're completely dwelling safely. There's, they're always on guard. Somebody's always trying to attack them. Um, but this is futuristic when there is a time of complete peace where um, they're not worried about enemies attacking. Um, there is complete um, safety and security in the land. And this is when um, Gog and Magog come um, in, in, that, in the final days. And God will fight for them and destroy this enemy completely. And all the nations will know. That he is Adonai and he is in control. You are not going to you're not going to tamper with the apple of God's eye, which is Israel. And that has never changed and will never change. Israel is the, the natural um, branch. And of course, we are part of that family um, through Yeshua. We become um, blessed of the Abrahamic, Abrahamic covenant. So, um, yeah, we are part of that. So we are all family with, with Anaya Israel. So, um, definitely, definitely God will fight for his people. So we're going to go on to, um, Zechariah chapter 14. So Zechariah, we're going to do the entire chapter, uh, verses 1 through 21. Coming to the Mount of Olives. So this is, again, future prophecy. This is, this is when Yeshua returns. Behold, a day of Adonai is coming, when your plunder will be divided in your midst. I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to wage war. The city shall be captured, the houses ransacked, and the women ravished. Half of the city will be exiled, but the remainder of the people will not be cut off from the city. Then Adonai will go forth and fight against those nations. Okay, this was, we were talking about Gog and Magog and Ezekiel uh, chapter 38 to 39. So here we go. This is the continuance um, spoken now by uh, Zechariah, the prophet. 
then Adonai will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. In that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which lies to the east of Jerusalem, and the Mount of Olives will be split in two from east to west, forming a huge valley. Yeshua is not returning to any other city but to Jerusalem. Half of the mountain will move toward the north and half of it toward the south. Then you will flee through my mountain valley because the mountain valley will reach to Azul. Yes, you will flee like you fled from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah of Judah. Then Adonai, my God, will come and all the Kedashim with him. All the holy ones, the saints, um, will be right in, right along with Yeshua. In that day, there will be no light, cold, or frost. It will be a day known only to Adonai, neither day nor night. Even in the evening time, there will be light. Moreover, in that day, living waters will flow from Jerusalem, half toward the eastern sea and half toward the western sea, both in the summer and in the winter. Adonai will then be king over all the earth. In that day, Adonai will be Echad, and his name, Echad. And that means one, or the composite oneness. Adonai will be one. Okay, the whole land from Giba to Rimmon south of Jerusalem will become like the Arabah. Jerusalem will be raised up and occupy her place from the Benjamin gate to the place of the first gate to the corner gate and from the tower of Hananel to the king's wine presses. People will dwell in her and no longer will there be a ban of destruction. Jerusalem will live in security. Now this is the plague with which Adonai will strike all the peoples that wage war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they are standing on their feet, their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouths. It will happen in that day that a great panic from Adonai will be among them. Each person will seize the, the hand of his neighbor, and they will attack each other. Even Judah will fight at Jerusalem. The wealth of all the surrounding peoples will be gathered together, an abundance of gold, silver, and apparel. A similar plague will strike the horse, the mule, the camel, the donkey, and all the animals in that camp. Then all the survivors from all the nations that attacked Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king. Adonai, Sevaot, and to celebrate Sukkot. Now this is during the millennial reign. Um, this will be Sukkot when Yeshua is here. All the survivors from all the nations that attacked Jerusalem will go up from year to year to worship the king, King Yeshua, King Adonai, Sabaot, and to celebrate Sukkot. Furthermore, if any of the nations on earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Adonai, Sabaot, they will have no rain. If the Egyptians do not go up and celebrate, they will have no rain. Instead, there will be the plague that Adonai will inflict on the nations that do not go up to celebrate Sukkot. This will be the punishment of Egypt and the punishment of all the nations that do not go to celebrate Sukkot. In that day, holy to Adonai will be inscribed on the bells of the horses and the pots in the house of Adonai will be like the sacred bowls in front of the altar. In fact, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah will be holy to Adonai so that everyone who comes to sacrifice will take them and cook in them. In that day, there will no longer be a Canaanite in the house of Adonai. Sabaot. And that is the end of the half Torah portion. And again, you know, we're talking about Sukkot. We're talking about um, the parallels of God fighting for his people. Um, and then the millennial reign. Um, the half Torah portion um, is actually future time that is prophesied. And it's interesting because these were prophets in the Tanakh, in the Old Testament. Um, so when you look at the prophets, um, they're prophesying and, and what they may prophesy, you know, no one, no one has a timetable uh, on, on what God is saying will, when it will happen. Um, 
so all in God's time. And um, yes, we are in the end, end times, but know this, uh, this is for a future time. And this was two prophets, um, Ezekiel and Zechariah, that prophesied uh, the second coming of Yeshua as well. Um, well, actually, Ezekiel, it was the battle, uh, the battle of uh, Armageddon, basically, um, was depicted here. And Zechariah went further to say, you know, Sukkot will be coming to Jerusalem to worship the king. And that will be King Yeshua himself. So we're going to take a break. We're going to say a, a prayer now and then take a break and come back with a brick at a shop portion. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your Moedim. We thank you for what they signify. We thank you for the prophets who have prophesied futuristic events and times that are to come. So we can be aware of signs and seasons. We also know that these feasts were for signs and seasons also so that, that we are aware we are aware and we are prepared what is to happen in the future with the fall feasts. And we look forward to the millennial reign of King Yeshua, of coming up to Jerusalem during Sukkot to worship him, to give him honor, to give him praise, to give him glory, for he is worthy of all of our praise. We thank you. We thank you, Yeshua. We thank you, Father God for giving your only begotten son to redeem us, to make it possible that we could, we could live in eternity with you. We thank you so much. We love you. We honor you. We worship and adore you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, our King, our Lord of Lords and our King of Kings. Amen and amen. Take a short break and come back. We will come back with um, the second segment of Shabbat, and it will be uploaded as part three. <laughs> 